Hello, Blake Rudis here with Everyday HDR and HDRinsider.com, and today I'm going to show you how to match colors from one photo to another. So you're going to say, what in the heck do these two images have in common? Absolutely nothing, but I want this composite to have the colors of this one. So how do I do that? Well, here's how we're going to look at option number one, and here's option number two. Both very different, both with each of their own pros and cons, and both done in a very, very different way in Photoshop. So let's jump into Photoshop, and I'll show you how this is done. All right, so today what I want to show you are two different ways that you can match a color in Photoshop. This is a recent request from somebody on Everyday HDR. One of the subscribers asked, how can I match a color palette from a different photo onto another one? So here's a composite I did a while ago. Um, it, it's amazing what a fit of rage can do to your muscles. Uh, well, maybe it was Photoshop. Yeah, it was probably Photoshop. Anyway, uh, gotta love that liquify tool. So here's me, I had a heart monitor on and I made this crazy cool com composite, but it needs some color grading to it. So what I like is, I like the colors that are going on in this photograph. And I wanna see if I can incorporate these colors into this photo. And there are two ways we can do that. The first way is to go to image, go to adjustments and go to match color. So what it's basically telling us here is that this is the destination image. It's called Origins, uh, like Wolverine Origins Large. Okay, and we want to pull the color from another photo. So since this other photo is already open in my Photoshop, I can go to that source and I can choose Autumn. And what you're going to see is that it wildly gets applied to the photograph. And there's a couple ways we can control that. If you can see, we've got three options up here. We've got luminance, color intensity, and fade. Color intensity is going to be kind of like saturation, but it's a saturation in the way that the colors from this image are applied to this image. So we probably want to bring that color intensity down a little bit. Luminance is just like most luminance values that we see in Photoshop. This is going to show you the luminance value of the, the brightness of the overall image after the color has been applied. So you can see that this is extremely bright, this is extremely dark, and those are your two crazy extremes. The fade, this one's the important slider. Right now, there's no real fade from the color that's being applied onto this image, but if I move this up, you see the two extremes. Here, there, it looks like there's really nothing happening, but if we look at our before and after, there actually is something happening. So the fade, I like to keep, you know, this is what I like to use as my control marker. So how much do I want this color to be applied to the other photograph? So I'll move this up a little bit. If we go to color intensity, now we can see how the color increases, and then we can also adjust our luminance from there. So the fade kind of helps set the stage a little bit, and then you can use these other sliders to apply it. So if you look at this, here's the before, here's the after. It looks like we did pull some color from this photo, uh, and it's being applied to our other photo. Some of the reds in it are being amplified and so forth, and this is a great way to do that. If you press the neutralize button, it's basically going to neutralize the color cast there and just apply uh, basically a wash of the color to the image. So it, it takes away the vibrance, I guess, of the image before and uh, just kind of neutralizes all those colors to keep them at bay when you're putting it on the photo. You can experiment with this. I kind of like it when the neutralize is not there because I get more of a natural color pull from this image. So that's pretty much option number one that we have to do that. A couple of things you have to keep in mind here. Now it does create a nice color cast over our photo, but if you do not duplicate the layer first, it's going to apply it almost destructively. So you gotta make sure that you duplicate that background layer by pressing Command or Control J first in order for that to happen. Now it also does kind of restrict you if you do it this way. If you don't duplicate your background layer, you're going to have some problems. So let's go ahead and go back real quick and I will go ahead and duplicate my background layer, I will quickly go back into image adjustments, match color, and match those exact same settings, uh, 83 and 56, and then go to that autumn image and press OK. So now, because we have it on another layer, we can choose maybe to change the blending options in here to soft light or something. So that, and we can also do some other things to maybe adjust the opacity so it doesn't affect our image quite as much. You gotta make sure you duplicate that background layer. That's one of the big limiting factors here. So I kind of did that on purpose so that you could see uh, that if you don't do that, what the negative effects are, that you actually get a destructive action kind of happening there. So option two is a little bit different. I'm gonna go ahead and just 
turn the eyeball off on this one so we can see the before and after with option two. So with option two, what we want to do is we want to basically pull the five or six main colors from this image and apply them to this one. So the way we're going to do this is kind of an off the wall kind of trick here. You're going to have to go to image mode, make sure you're set to eight bits per channel. We're now going to go to filter and filter gallery. So here we're going to go to the filter gallery and we're going to select cutout. And with cutout, we want the number of levels to be four. We want the edge simplicity to be 10 and the edge fidelity to be one. And what this is going to do is it's going to make a really blocky kind of image here. So we're going to go ahead and press OK. And you'll just see all these random kind of blocks. You're thinking, what the heck are you doing, Blake? How are you going to apply this to this? It's OK. I'm getting there. I'm, I'm acting like an artist now. So I'm putting on my Bob Ross hat and showing you the color palette that we're going to be using today to make our happy uh, Wolverine trees. Anyway, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a gradient map layer. With this gradient map layer, I want to drop the opacity down to zero. There's a reason for this. So now when I click right here, I'm going to make myself, let's say, a couple different points on our gradient map. There's five different points there. With this one, I just grab this color, just click right in that little box, and I'm going to grab the darkest color. Oh, and if you see white, this is a common occurrence for me, I'm going to press cancel. You have to make sure you're not on the mask. Okay, so click on that layer, and now click on the gradient map. Okay, so now we're going to make five little dots here. And we're going to click on this one. Happens to the best of us, you know. I'm going to click the darkest color. Click this one. Now we see dark, not white. Make sure you're on that layer, not on the mask. And then we're going to click this color. And we're going to go here. And then we're going to click maybe this color. And then we'll select, uh, let's see, this reddish color here. And then we'll select uh, maybe this brightish uh, red, pinkish color here. And then the lightest color here. And press OK. Now what this becomes is this becomes the layer that we're going to drag and drop right on top of our image that we want to color grade. So I'm going to just drag and drop it right on top by pressing and holding shift. And now I can increase the opacity and now I've got all of the colors from the palette before. I think this is a much more effective way because you have a lot more control. Watch what I'm going to do here and show you. Change the color. Now we get uh, the color overlaying it. It doesn't affect our blacks and whites nearly as much, so it's less of a wash and more of an intense tone. And we can drop this opacity down to, let's say, I don't know, 27 to 30 percent ish will be good. Now we get this kind of light wash over our photo. That's one way we can control that. Another way is we can change that to soft light and then really bring up that. Uh, amplification of color there by just kind of washing that color over top of it. Uh, we can also change that back to, to normal. And here, with, when it's on normal, we can go into our blend if options by double clicking right here. And let's say we want to protect our blacks in the underlying layers. So anything that's black in the underlying layer, we just move this over and it'll start to protect our blacks. It does it in a really splotchy manner, so we'll press Alter Option to split this into our midtones. And then we'll do that with the whites too. We'll move this over until the whites start to get a little splotchy and then split this into our midtones. And then from there, we can adjust our opacity accordingly also. So it's not affecting our blacks or our whites, it's just affecting our midtones essentially. So let's go ahead and take a look at the differences here. This is with this color being applied with the gradient map, and this is with the color being applied with our match color. They're both very different and both give very different effects. Now to take this one to this extreme that we have here, we could then go into our curve and just maybe make that a little bit brighter and, and amplify that accordingly to kind of make it match that match color kind of look. So either way, you can use both uh, separately. You can use them both together. Either way, you're going to get a different type of matched color palette from a different photo applied to another one. So there are many ways that you can do this uh, match color option. I prefer the gradient map one. I know that that's really kind of hard to remember to create your palette by using the uh, filter gallery and so on and so forth. So what I've done is I've created a set of actions here, the color palette and grading actions. So not only does it prep your image for this palette, it also gives you the gradient map layer that you can apply later. Uh, and then you've got some other actions here. You can get that on everydayhdr.com. Just go ahead and click in this little box right here and you can go ahead and go to everydayhdr.com and grab that. Again, my name is Blake Rudis with Everyday HDR and HDRinsider.com. I really hope you enjoy this tutorial. Remember to like it, share it, 
comment on it, and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. If you subscribe to the YouTube channel, every Friday when I create these new tutorials, you'll get a message in your inbox so you always stay up to date on these really cool new ways that you can modify your photos and in turn become a better photographer. Thank you very much for watching this. Have a great weekend.